Hey everybody, how are you feeling today? Are you happy? Are you sad? Are you angry or are you scared? Well guys, as you can see, I have all of these emotions for you on the board today. And today I'm going to teach you 20 different ways to express yourself in English, to talk about your emotions. After all, emotions are something that we all go through and we must have a strong vocabulary for that. So come on, let's get started with our lesson for the day. My name is Michelle and you're watching Let's Talk, the place to improve your vocabulary. Come on. emotion for the day and that is happiness. So how can you express being happy? Well the first word that I have for you is glad, that you're feeling glad about something. So when can you use this word? Well imagine that your friend is coming over to your place. You'd say I'm glad that you're coming over to meet me. That's how you will use this word. It means you're very happy. Now, another level of being happy is being is called delighted, okay? Imagine that you have to go to your friend's party and you're very excited about it. You will tell her, hey, I'm delighted to come to your party today. So that's delighted. Great. Now let's look at the third way to express your happiness. We have already looked at glad, we've looked at delighted. Now the other word that I have for you is cheerful. Well, cheerful is not just a feeling. It's also a word that you can use to describe someone's personality. So if there is a person who is always happy, wow, I love these kind of people, first of all, we would say that he or she has a cheerful personality. That's cheerful for you. Now, apart from cheerful, there are two more words that you can use to express your happiness. And for that one, we have thrilled. So imagine that somebody got your favorite flowers for you on your birthday. What would you say? You'd say, I'm thrilled to receive these flowers. What a lovely present. So that's thrilled. Lovely. And with that, we've reached our last word to talk about happiness. And this word is called as ecstatic. Well, this word actually comes from the English word ecstasy, which is a noun. And ecstatic is an adjective which you use to talk about how you're feeling. So guys, ecstasy is a state of consistent happiness where you're so happy that there is no sadness at all. You're completely happy, okay? So when you're so happy, you would say that you're feeling ecstatic. And I think the best place to use this word is when you want to talk about the birth of a child. You'd say that the couple was ecstatic at the birth of their first child. Now, as you notice that I used the preposition at with it, so the same way when you want to use the word ecstatic, you would say that you're ecstatic about something or ecstatic at something. That's ecstatic for you. So the couple was ecstatic at the birth of their first child. And now we have all of these five words to talk about happiness. Now let's move on to our next emotion. And as you can see, that is sadness. So how do you express being sad? Well, if you are really sick and you're very sad because you're sick, then you're feeling miserable. Yes, that's the first word. Feeling miserable. Right. So if you know someone who is sick and you want to ask them, then you could say that, hey, are you sick? You look miserable. So either you can say that you feel miserable or you look miserable, which have to do more with sickness. Now let's look at the second word that you can use to talk about feeling really sad. And that is upset. So if something really bad has happened with you, you'd say that I'm feeling really upset because my dog died last evening. Okay, so that's how you use the word upset, which means you're very unhappy and very sad about it. Now, the third word that I have for you is somber. 
So when somebody dies, the overall atmosphere becomes really somber. So you could say ever since my dog has passed away, the atmosphere at my home is really somber. So that's somber for you. And now let's look at the next word that we have to talk about, sadness. Well, we've already looked at miserable, upset and somber. The next word is gloomy. So gloomy is usually used to talk about weather. So when there's this really sad weather and the sky is really clouded, you begin to feel gloomy. But at the same time, if something really bad has happened with you and you're unhappy, then you could say that you're feeling gloomy about something. So for instance, if you lost your job, you could say that I've been gloomy ever since I've lost my job. I don't know how to regain my happiness. Okay, now let's look at the fourth way, which is an extreme way to talk about being sad and that is depressed. Now again, this word depressed comes from an English noun, which is depression. Now guys, depression is a medical condition where you feel really disturbed because of losing somebody or having a really bad experience. That's not the kind of feeling that I'm mainly talking about here today. So what I'm talking about is the overall feeling of sadness, which lasts only for a while. So for that, you could say that I'm really depressed because I've lost my job right? Which means you're extremely sad. Or else you could say I'm a bit depressed because of my work situation here, right? So that's how you talk about feeling depressed temporarily and not about the medical condition depression, okay? Now moving on, let's look at our next feeling and that is mm, being scared, okay? What are you scared of? Well, if I have to answer this question, I'd say I'm really afraid of spiders. So over here, instead of using the word scared, I used the word afraid. And that's my first synonym to talk about being scared. Now, apart from this word, you could say that you're frightened of something, which means you're very scared of something. That's frightened. So you have to look carefully at the spelling because in this word, we have GH in the middle, which is not really pronounced. So when you write it, remember to add GH. So that's frightened. Now, you can be afraid of something. You can be frightened of something. You could also feel something terrible when you're terrified of something. So terrified means being extremely scared of something. So well, if I have to answer this question, I'm really terrified of heights. And if you're scared of something particular, you could say that you're terrified of it. Now, did you notice I used the preposition of? So usually when you say use the word terrified, you need to mention what are you terrified of? What is that thing which gets you really scared? So that's how you say you're terrified of something. Great. Now let's move on and look at the next word that we have for being scared. And that is creeped out. So if something scares you a lot, you could say that it creeps you out. So for me, you know, clowns, I'm really scared of them and they actually creep me out, which means that when I see them, I almost feel like I saw a ghost. So I, I'd say that I don't like clowns because they creep me out. But it's important when you say creep out, you add me in the middle of that to talk about what creeps you out. Or else you could just say that clowns creep me out, okay? Now the final one that we have is spooked out. So if there's a loud noise in the room, I'm sure you will be spooked out, especially if it's in the middle of the night when there is 
Uh, no light and it's absolutely dark and you recently watched a horror movie. I'm sure you'll be spooked out. Or else, I remember this other time when in the middle of the night there was this loud noise and my cat spooked out, like, oh, she was so scared about who was there or somebody had just entered the room. So that's spooked out for you. And with that, we have already looked at five words to talk about being scared. Now we're moving to the last section of our lesson, which is to talk about anger. So the first word that you can use to talk about anger is mad, okay? Okay, so when you're angry at somebody, you could say that I'm really mad at you for not getting to the restaurant in time. Now again with mad, I have used the preposition at and similarly you also need to mention what are you angry about by using mad at something. So mad at you or mad at her or mad about something, okay? Now the other word that you can use to express your anger is furious. So if you have lost some important documents, you could say, I'm really furious because I can't find my college degree. Well, obviously, if you can't find it, you'll be really angry and you'd want to find it as soon as possible because that's a very important document. Now with that, we have another word which is enraged. So guys, if you are enraged, that could be because you're extremely angry about something. And again, in a similar situation, you could say that I'm enraged because I lost my, I, I couldn't catch my flight and it only left when I arrived at the airport. So you could say that I'm enraged because I couldn't catch my flight. Now with that, we move to the next word, which is heated. So heated is generally used when you're very angry because of what someone said to you. It's also used in a, as an adjective to talk about an argument. So you could say that I had a heated argument with her, which means a very angry, very emotionally charged argument. You could also say that after she spoke to me like that, I'm really heated, don't talk to me, which means I'm really angry. And with that, we have the last and the most extreme way of talking about anger, and that is pissed off. So guys, pissed off means you're extremely angry about something. You're so angry that you could do something really bad at that time. And again, this is a slang expression. It's a really rude expression, so you want to be careful of using it. But yes, when you use it, you're surely telling that you're angry to the fullest, as much as it can get. So you could say that I had to stand in the line or I had to stand in the queue for two hours only to fill a form. I'm absolutely pissed off. Okay, so that's how you use the word pissed off. And with that, as you can see, we've come to the end of our lesson where today you've learned 20 new words to express yourself in English. And I hope that next time when you need to talk about any of these emotions, you will not struggle for words. So make sure you keep a list of these words handy so that you can use them whenever you need it. And yes, my tip for you at the end of the lesson will be be sure to recap and revise whatever new words you learn at least every three days. You must revise it once so that you can remember it forever. So thank you so much for watching this lesson with me. I hope this was useful and you got a few words for your vocabulary bank. Come back for more lessons with me. This is Michelle signing off. Bye-bye.